You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Chandrakala Chaudhary with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with India where in the line of further improving the decades old strategic and defense ties, India and Russia signed multiple deals during their annual bilateral summit in the Indian capital New Delhi. India inked $5.43 billion deal to purchase five advanced S-400 Triumph surface to air missiles despite looming US financial sanctions. A report. Fifth October 2018 went down as a historic day in the India-Russia relationship as India, defying the looming sanctions threats from the United States of America, stamped on a long-awaited multi-billion dollar defense deal which promises to significantly enhance the India weaponry. The acquisition of the S-400 system for which India is going to spend 5.43 billion US dollars would be the latest in a long series of Indian defence purchases after the country had previously purchased combat planes, ships and submarines from Russia. The S-400 missile system is a state-of-the-art weapons platform with a maximum range of 400 km considered one of the best defence systems in existence. The two sides also signed a civil nuclear agreement that will pave way for new nuclear power projects of Russian design in India and collaborations in the third countries. В деталях обсудили флагманский проект в сфере мирного атома АЭС Кудамкулам. Первые два ее блока постепенно выходят на полную мощность. Ведется строительство третьего и четвертого блока на очереди сооружения пятого и шестого. Согласно имеющимся договоренностям на основе российских передовых технологий в Индии в течение 20 лет планируется возвести 12 энергоблоков. Затрагивалась тематика углубления сотрудничества в промышленной и инвестиционной сфере. The two countries India and Russia share a special relationship and India is the second largest market for the Russian defense industry. Between 2000 and 2014, 73% of India's imported military equipment came from Russia and in 2017 alone, 68% of the Indian military's hardware imports came from Moscow. К 2025 году до 30 миллиардов долларов, а объем взаимных инвестиций до 15 миллиардов долларов. В этом контексте с удовлетворением отметили, что в прошлом году взаимная торговля... Modi and Putin, who revived the entire gamut of bilateral ties, also stressed at the working together in a wider spectrum in coming times and signed as many as eight agreements ranging from space and nuclear to transport sector. While addressing a business summit on the sidelines, Modi asserted that India was committed in further deepening its ties with Russia and sought Russian investors and businessmen to establish and expand their businesses in India. साथियों आप सब इस बात से भली भांति परिचित हैं कि रूस की कंपनियों को भारत में निवेश करने में सुविधा हो इसके लिए हमने रशिया प्लस नाम से एक व्यवस्था खड़ी की है इस व्यवस्था का उद्देश्य है रूस के निवेशकों को एवं कंपनियों को आवश्यक जो भी सहयोग चाहिए वो प्रदान करना और मुझे बताया गया है कि दोनों देशों के बीच आर्थिक सहयोग को और बढ़ाने के लिए जॉइंट वर्किंग ग्रुप काम कर रहे हैं व्लादिमिर पुतिन थैंक प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ द रिपब्लिक ऑफ इंडिया नरेंद्र मोदी फॉर द हॉस्पिटैलिटी एक्सटेंडेड एंड इनवाइटेड हिम टू विजिट रशिया फॉर द ट्वेंटी समिट इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन India and Russia have shared elaborate and splendid relations over the years and India's current inclination towards United States have not affected the relationship. Moving on, Pakistan has been facing hit and backlash in different parts of the world. 
While its hypocrisy was called out at recently concluded United Nations General Assembly, its own people belonging to different provinces are carrying out demonstrations and protests seeking the redressal of decades-long discrimination and persecution. Recently, World Sindhi Congress and advocacy group that has been battling for Sindhi rights carried out a demonstration in London against the indiscriminate and immoral construction of dams on Indus River in Pakistan. We have a report. Scores of Sindhi protesters gathered outside the Pakistani High Commission in London to protest against the unchecked construction of dams on Indus River and massive human rights violations being meted out on civilians on the pretext of development in Sindh province of Pakistan. Carrying floats and placards with no more dams on Indus and stop human rights violations in Sindh, the protesters from World Sindhi Congress raised anti-Pakistan slogans and urged Islamabad to immediately stop the construction on Indus River. They said the Pakistani establishment was aggressively pursuing construction of mega-projects and dams without any consideration of rights of indigenous Sindhi people and the environment. Everyone knows that Indus River as the bloodline of Sindh and Sindhi people. World Sindhi Congress urges the Pakistani administration to scrap any mega dams from plans and instead focus thoroughly on modern water management and electricity generation from solar, nuclear and other renewable energy sources. According to reports, the Diyamir Bhasha Dam is expected to cost 14 billion US dollars with 6 million acre foot of life storage and it will take 30 years to pay back. Whereas new technologies which do not require billions of dollars of investment and payback begins on the first day of the project. We feel that this proposal or this construction of dam is a direct attack on our Sindhi nation as a people, as their livelihood and their existence because water is a key resource and key economics for Sindhi people and Sindhi. Sindhi activists have also been requesting the international community to take notice of the violence against their peaceful struggle. Pakistani security forces have been involved in severe human rights violations in the region including enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and suppression of religion. According to an estimate, over 100 nationalists have been abducted since 9-11. Many of them fell victims to extrajudicial killings and their mutilated and bullet-ridden bodies were dumped in the streets. Sindhi political activists accuse Islamabad of fueling sectarian violence and terrorism in the region. There have been numerous incidents of forceful conversion of Hindu girls and attack on the minorities. Baloch activists also joined the protest and raised their concern over exploitation of resources by Islamabad. Recently, my colleague Ravi Khandelwal spoke to Dr. Hidayat Bhutto, an activist of World Sindhi Congress. Here are a few excerpts. Uh, Dr. Bhutto, uh, we have seen a rise, sudden rise uh, uh, in the human rights violations in Sindh province of Pakistan. So, can you please tell us what is the situation out there? There is a, a situation is too much worse. Uh, re recently, human rights violation is uh, uh, I mean, the uh, worst uh, ever situation in the history. And we feel that uh, uh, there is in imposed disappearances on a very, very high level. Not only now they are uh, uh, kidnapping the people and enforced disappearing people, but they are insulting and uh, they are doing sexual violence on our uh, women as well. So this uh, phenomena has been recently developed and they have uh, caused a huge problem for uh, our uh, things. Now the government has changed and in government they want to create dams and uh, dams is created, uh, dam fund is created by the uh, uh, Chief Justice of Pakistan with the support of army and army has given him task. He is not doing his job but he is committing genocide uh, uh, against the Sindhi people. He wants to uh, stop our water, he wants to make us more uh, poor and more uh, in disease uh, process and uh, we don't want them to build the dam dams on Indus River. Uh, you talk about the building of dams. Uh, is it the repercussions of the China-Pakistan economic corridor that Pakistan is now actively uh, you know, uh, willing to build all these dams in Sindh? 
Yes, this is the part of uh, China Pak economic corridor is going on. This is one of the uh, phenomena uh, which they are. Uh, we Sindhis are totally against China Pak economic corridor. We think that it's uh, exploiting our resources, uh, and uh, Pakistan is uh, uh, taking loans uh, in the name of uh, our resources, and our resources will be at stake. And uh, these dams. They are building on these loans with the support of these loans and they are developing uh, funds and we think that this is a genocide uh, of Sindhi people. Not only the people, our uh, agriculture, our lands, our fisheries, our uh, animals, our whole culture is at stake in Pakistan because of these dams and uh, we are against these dams. There is also a sudden rise uh, in the number of S4 disappearances in Sindh. Uh, there are many political acti activists, those who are being targeted, they are being picked, they are being killed. So why uh, now they are targeting the political activists in Sindh? Uh, they are targeting political activists because they think that there is a vice. They are developing, uh, producing a vice against these atrocities, these kidnappings, these uh, 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 violence and exploitation of our resources, more importantly our slavery. And uh, if anybody talks against the slavery, against the exploitation and their own rights, they are kidnapping them uh, to silence the, uh, them by force. And they are causing harassment in the, uh, our own society, our whole civil society. And uh, uh, to some extent they are successful, but will, our civil society, our people are resisting them and uh, they will get defeat and we, wa we won't be uh, fearful for these acts. Moving on to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, a region that has been reeling under Pakistani subjugation for more than seven decades. Islamabad has been indiscriminately exploiting resources which exclusively belong to the region. In its latest example of economic depredation, Pakistan is building dams on water of the region and keeping bereft people of any dividends coming off it. Locals have been carrying out demonstrations and protests against local authorities and Islamabad seeking an immediate intervention. We bring you the story. Anger against the local government and Islamabad has snowballed into a simmering outrage in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. The locals, who are now deprived of even basic need of water, are compelled to take to the streets against the mounting discrimination. Recently, in an attempt to register their dissent, which cropped up after the construction of the Neelam Jhelam hydropower dam, the locals led by the traders and activists carried out protests and a shutter down strike against the administration which has by and large acted against the interests of the common people. Demonstrations, strikes and protests have however become a part of POK political arena. It has been unsuccessful at forging anything concrete for the people of the region. Dejected with the template sympathies provided by the administration, activists say that they are deliberating at knocking the doors of international organizations. Islamabad has for years been plundering the resources of the occupied territory and filling its coffers in Islamabad, leaving the people reeling under abject poverty. Since the advent of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, it has stepped up its devious activities of grabbing the land and resources of POK. Locals accuse that Islamabad is exploiting them to please its Chinese masters. Pakistan, which claims to have given autonomous rights to POK, has in reality treated it as its colony with no honor being accorded to its elected assembly. 
مظفرآباد کو بیابان اور سنسان بنانے کی کوشش کی گئی ہے بغیر کسی معاہدے کے اور آزاد کشمیر ایک تو مظفرآباد کو تباہ کیا دوسرا ایک جو ہے آپ کی یہ آنکھیں کھول دی گئی کہ یہاں آپ کی اسمبلی کی آپ کی حکومت کی اوقات کیا ہے آپ کا پرائم منسٹر اعلان کرتا ہے کہ یہ گوالا پراجیکٹ ہی بنے گا اور آپ کا منسٹر یہاں شہر کا ایم ایل اے اعلان کرتا ہے اور اس کے بعد اس کے انہوں نے چوبیس گھنٹے کے اندر اندر وہاں پہ افتتا کروایا ہے Ever since the construction of the Neelam Jhelum hydro power project, the Neelam River passing through Muzaffarabad appears as a storm water drain filled with sewage waste. The project which was built at the pretext of bringing prosperity has deeply affected the lives of the common people with many of them forced to migrate to other places in the country and all this is being done to realize the materialistic ambitions of Pakistan. Well, moving on, the government of India has stepped up its efforts to restore and rejuvenate the river Ganga, religiously and economically the most significant river of the country. Apart from extensively carrying out its task, an awareness drive which essentially aims at connecting more people to the flagship project and spreading information amongst the mass has also been initiated by the government. A report. <laughs> The National Mission for Clean Ganga under its flagship Namami Gange program is confident of accomplishing its task of rejuvenating and conserving the mighty and pious river Ganga by 2020. In a bid to timely achieve its objectives, the Indian government has ramped up its programs of comprehensively cleaning Ganga and its tributaries along several cities, towns and villages. Several projects have been completed and many are underway which would help stop the flow of thousands of million litres per day of industrial effluents and untreated domestic sewage into 2500 km long river. The contribution of industrial pollution volume rises about 20% but due to its toxic and non-biodegradable nature it has much greater significance. We have taken up more than 220 projects, uh, more than 55 projects have already been completed. A large number of projects are under execution. So if you look at sewage sector, we have we are implementing 106 projects, 26, uh, 28 projects are already complete and most of the projects are under execution. We have to call for tender for only 7 projects. So most of the projects are either at the advanced stage likely to be completed in 2018 or 2019. So against the target of completing our mission of uh, Namami Gange in December 2020 and then the uh, target is no untreated flow should go into the river. So we are on track and uh, a large number of projects are on ground and then we expect that in next two years most of them will get complete. In the line of the cleaning mission, Kalindi Kunjkhat on the Yamuna River was cleaned as a part of the Namami Gange project of National Mission for Clean Ganga in capital New Delhi. People from another flagship program, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, private partners and bank employees participated in the event. The cleanliness drive focused on freeing the Yamuna Ghat of plastic and solid wastes. Maniye Pradhan Mantri Ji ki leadership mein aur unke avahan pe स्वच्छता ही सेवा पखवाड़ा मनाया जा रहा है इस पखवाड़े के तहत हम लोग स्वच्छता ही गंगा सेवा पखवाड़ा मना रहे हैं जहां हम विभिन्न घाटों पर जाके गंगा सफाई का अभियान कर रहे हैं जहां पर गंगा घाटों पर सफाई कर रहे हैं और लोगों को गंगा मिशन और गंगा सफाई में जोड़ने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं आज मैं यहाँ धन्यवाद देना चाहूँगा हमारे बहुत सारे स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं जैसे हमारे एस है हमारे एस के सहयोगी हैं हमारे और कार्यकर्ता हैं कुछ बैंकों के सहयोगी हैं जो आज हमारे साथ यहाँ पर जुड़े हैं और राष्ट्रीय स्वच्छ गंगा मिशन में हमारे साथ कंधे से कंधा मिला के बहुत सारे गंगा रिजुवनेशन के लिए प्रोग्राम में हमारा सहयोग कर रहे हैं राष्ट्रीय स्वच्छ गंगा मिशन बहुत सारे गंगा पे पुर्जा पुनर्जीवन के लिए गंगा के रिस्टोरेशन के लिए कार्यक्रम बना रहे हैं जिस पर जिसमें आपके स्वीज ट्रीटमेंट प्लान का स्थापना शामिल है पॉल्यूशन अबेटमेंट के कार्यक्रम शामिल हैं घाट और क्रेमाटोरिया के पुनर्निर्माण और उनके उद्धार शामिल हैं इसके साथ साथ हम लोग बायोडाइवर्सिटी कंजर्वेशन कर रहे हैं और गंगा घाटों के पाँच किलोमीटर के दोनों तरफ बैंकों पे एक बहुत ही व्यापक प्लांटेशन का कार्यक्रम कर रहे हैं इसके साथ साथ हमारी कोशिश ये है कि हम 
जन जन को इस प्रोग्राम में शामिल करें जिससे कि जब तक कि जन जन गंगा पे और गंगा को धरोहर के मान के उसको नहीं अपनाएंगे तब तक ये अभियान सफल नहीं होगा एन एम सी जी हैज बिन रनिंग वेरियस प्रोजेक्ट टू क्लीन रिवर गंगा ऑफ ऑल द वेस्ट बाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी The steps have been taken by NMCG to modernize the ghats and various projects have been taken up for regular cleaning of ghats in Varanasi, Haridwar, Mathura, Vrindavan, Kanpur and Allahabad among others. Earlier in July as well NMCG had cleaned the Kalindi Kunj ghat as a part of the Namami Gange project in to run up to the World Environment Day. At that time more than 15 trucks full of waste collected from the ghat and the river were transported for proper disposal. Well the government says that 30 sewage treatment plants with capacity to treat 607 million liters per day will be completed by December this year. 1725 km long sewer lines will also be laid by the year end. Moving on Hunar e Kashmir festival was organized by the Indian army to connect with the youths of the Kashmir valley as well as to lend them a platform to showcase their talent. The festival was held to channelize the energy of the youth to creative and constructive pursuits while also giving them an opportunity to exchange ideas and promote bond homing. They even unearthed many budding talents in the field of music and creative arts. South Asia Focus has a report. Indian Army's Chinar Corps conducted the annual Chinar Youth Festival Hunari Kashmir in Jammu and Kashmir's capital Srinagar. Organized at the Sheri Kashmir International Convention Center Hunari Kashmir which is an array of events and competitions provided the underprivileged children a platform to showcase their talents in front of Governor of Jammu and Kashmir Satyapal Malik who presided over the cultural event. Hunari Kashmir has provided a platform to such hidden talents of Kashmir in various fields ranging from football to cycling calligraphy as well as musical performances. The event saw great participation and mesmerizing performances across fields by the youths from the valley. Hunare Kashmir ke madhyam se hum Kashmir ke youth jo ki hamare liye sabse zyada important hain unke liye humne program kiya alag alag inke talents dekhne ke liye football cycling sath mein calligraphy ka competition kiya ki ye jo hamare future hain इन फ्यूचर के साथ हम कनेक्ट हो पाए इनकी जरूरतें समझ पाए और इनके फ्यूचर को आगे बढ़ा पाए पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड स्पेक्टेटर्स आल्सो फेल दैट सच इवेंट्स नॉट ओनली हेल्प द यूथ शोकेस देयर टैलेंट बट आल्सो गिव्स देम अ डायरेक्शन टुवर्ड्स अचीविंग देयर ड्रीम्स आज का जो फेस्टिवल यूथ फेस्टिवल कंप्लीट यूथ फेस्टिवल है एट द सेम टाइम कॉम्पिटिशंस भी हो रहे हैं शॉपिंग मॉल भी है फूड कोर्ट भी है तो बहुत मजा आ रहा है एज कश्मीर लग रहा है आज की कश्मीर है वाकई तो इसलिए आज मैंने ही परफॉर्म किया है मैं एल्यूजनिस्ट हूँ मैंने इससे पहले नेशनल टीवी पे भी परफॉर्म किया है बस एक एम यही है कि अगर हमारा जो यूथ है डाइंग आर्ट है अगर उसको एक डायरेक्शन मिलती है तो वो भी शायद एक्सल करेंगे अपनी लाइफ में और बाकी सारे को भी शायद एक होप मिलेगी कि जब वो आगे जा रहा है तो मैं भी जा सकता हूँ तो ऐसा आई थिंक ऐसे यूथ फेस्टिवल्स होने चाहिए यूथ फेस्टिवल्स नहीं अगर हम कंसर्ट्स करें या कल्चरल इवेंट्स करें तो जितना ज़्यादा हो सकता है मुझे मेरे ख्याल से होना चाहिए The event also saw a scintillating performance by renowned Bollywood singer Javed Ali whose musical show aided by presence of film and TV artists provided wholesome entertainment. यहाँ पे मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा यहाँ का जो टैलेंट है मैंने बहुत सारे सिंगर्स को सुना डांसर्स को देखा और है ना कंपोजर्स को सुना बहुत टैलेंट भरा पड़ा हुआ है और मैं चाहूँगा कि ना जितने भी कश्मीर के लोग हैं वो अपना जो टेक वो टैलेंट है उसको दबाए नहीं उसको एक्सप्लोर करें बहुत बड़ी दुनिया है पूरा हिंदुस्तान उनके साथ में है और हम सब उनके साथ में The performances of the youths and the dedication was such that the army said at the conclusion of the event that they believed one day a certain Kashmiri star will be performing instead of the renowned Bollywood singer. Youth from across the valley including the far flung areas turned up to participate in the event. The participants remained confident that these competitions would help them attain their dreams. With that we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.